When it comes to Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, I don't think there is any character that is as prestigious to the franchise apart from Goku for obvious reasons. But with Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, he is protected ever since his one episode appearance in Dragon Ball GT episode 60, originally airing on the 22nd of October 1997 in Japan. Of course, these days there is a new main flagship pinnacle known as Ultra Instinct Goku found in Dragon Ball Super, and that's expected. It's a new generation, but even to this day, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is still holding his ground and is primarily the face of Dragon Ball gaming, making poster appearances and is broken in pretty much every game he's in. Let's take Fighters for example. He gets to square off against Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta in an unbelievable encounter. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, apart from Android 21's lab coat, was the final DLC for Fighters. The developers saved him for last, for the main event, up until this point, even after the Ultra Instinct Goku DLC, where both are amazing in their own right, but after all all these years, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is massively loved and gains more love every day. Power scale in a side, to think for nearly 30 years this character is still the king of Dragon Ball is an incredible accomplishment and is not by accident. But despite all of that long-term success, how does it link back to the original episode in Dragon Ball GT? Is the love deserved? Is Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta overrated? Let's look at his performance in Dragon Ball GT. Straight away, the feelings I got when seeing Goku and Vegeta fuse as Super Saiyan 4 were loaded with pure excitement. And after a magnificent merge, an awesome scene where Gogeta's body is slowly revealing itself with a giant biceps and red hair. I was fulfilled. His design is off the charts remarkable, and I think it's the coolest character design in the entire franchise. From design alone, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta has a legacy that will never be forgotten. Spectacular. Now, what about his performance against Yi Zinglong? That's Omega Shenron if you haven't watched the original Japanese. Could Gogeta have actually defeated the evil dragon if he tried, if he was serious? These results may shock you. After merging, Goku and Vegeta fought whilst under the impression they had 30 minutes. Of course, a problem emerged when the fusion split after 10 minutes, right before Gogeta tried to put Yi Zinglong away for good with a second Big Bang Kamehameha. But before this, Gogeta did accomplish something of importance in that moment. He goaded Omega into using his minus energy ball in which Gogeta could convert it to positive energy and cleanse the earth of the minus energy suffocating it. What comes in later episodes with the Genki Dama are the plot, but I can't knock Super Saiyan for Gogeta's success in the moment by freeing the Earth of the Shadow Dragon's death grip. Which brings me to the Big Bang Kamehameha. If Gogeta hadn't used the party Kamehameha, would the second Big Bang have launched and finished Yi Zinglong? And I don't think it would have. Here's why. You know how Super Saiyan Blue Vegito split apart the moment they charged a final Kamehameha? The great power overload of the fusion during a massive key surge was too much for the fusion parts to deal with. Similar to Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, they unfused the moment the second Big Bang was charging, making me believe the second one was going to be a stronger blast than the first, to end the dragon once and for all. However, Goku and Vegeta didn't realize the strain the fusion was under due to a certain instability with one of the fusion parts, that being Goku. They fully intended to defeat Omega, where there is no doubt they could have if the fusion itself was balanced with power and completely fresh. To back that up, the Dragon Ball GT Perfect Files state that Gogeta could defeat Omega Shenron with one finger, and again, I believe he could have if Gogeta was at 100% efficiency. The problem with Gogeta was Goku. I believe Gogeta's failure wasn't a time issue, but a power imbalance issue due to the fact Goku was still Super Saiyan 4 when they split, proving he still had power left to fight, but not enough to deal with what Gogeta needed in the Big Bang Kamehameha Surge. Remember, Super Saiyan 4 is an incredibly stable transformation and can last right down until the last drop of energy, as proven against Baby Vegeta when Goku was unconscious and still in Super Saiyan 4, and also when Omega hurt Goku so badly that he was getting cut by Mia Glass. It's easy to overlook just how banged up Goku was going into the fusion of Gogeta. So when he did run out of power and went to base form, you can bet he was completely drained by that point. 
The party Kamehameha was nothing to Gogeta's energy supply. It didn't tax him at all. It was nothing. Fusion split when the full time limit is fully up, or there's an imbalance in the fusion. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta suffered from the latter. The reason why Gotenks' fusion had less fusion time as Super Saiyan 3 is because the 30 minutes is shortened due to the imbalance in power. Goten and Trunks' merged bodies get shot, not that there's an auto set time reduction. Goten and Trunks' merged bodies get shot from that overload and must separate. If Gogeta didn't perform the Big Bang Kamehameha, I could see the fusion lasting longer just through passively being there, because Super Saiyan 4 is a very stable form. Commanding and using energy in great doses is what takes its toll on the fighters, not standing still. It wasn't just Goku's physical state that affected Gogeta, but it was also his mentality. After the fusion, Goku admitted to Vegeta that he was enjoying the awesome power of fusion a little too much, which is why Gogeta was having fun with his power. Does this make Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta overrated? All fusions are devastating. There always seems to be a subtle condition or motivation, in Super Vegito's case, on why the fusion doesn't finish off an opponent. It's not the fusion's fault, it's the plot's fault. But I don't think Gogeta could have defeated Omega under these drastic circumstances of Goku having a weakened body in the GT story. If he were to use two back-to-back -back Big Bang Kamehamehas right at the start of the battle, even before he used the party Kamehameha and purifying the Earth, the spike of energy needed for those Big Bangs, especially the second one, were what destroyed Gogeta's fusion power. He just couldn't handle it, not with Goku being in his condition. But let's talk about another reason why Gogeta might not have been able to win, even if he pulled off that second Big Bang Kamehameha and then split. Let's credit Omega Shenron for a moment. Not many compliment his strength. He was a tank. He's got some of the most raw durability of any Dragon Ball villain. Not only did he stand up laughing after the special moves, 10 times Kamehameha and the Big Bang Kamehameha, but Goku and Gogeta were also superior to him in power by a long shot when they pulled off those moves against him. He is a tank. What's to say he couldn't barely survive a second Big Bang Kamehameha? I do think Gogeta, with a second Big Bang would have killed him off 8 times out of 10, but there's still that possibility Yi Xinglong would survive. An absolute monster tank. Now, from a marketing standpoint, top-notch design, extremely powerful, and performs attacks so fast that nobody can see. How badass do you have to look on screen? An awesome finishing move name, which is amped up in video games by a hundred times in both name and visuals, and he's also a bit of a prankster as demonstrated with the party Kamehameha. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is pure good vibes. And from a business standpoint, he's absolutely not overrated. He is pure money. Is he a letdown by not finishing off Omega Shenron? I don't think he is. I think what came after Gogeta was far more important and fitting for the story of Goku because that was the closure of the Dragon Ball story overall at that point. And the end of GT is loved by many. And without the events of the Genki Dama, Goku ascending and then his departure with Shenron, who knows if Dragon Ball GT would still have the same love as it does today. It's gained much more appreciation over the years and it's nearly 30 years old. Who knows if Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta would be remembered as much today if it weren't for the Dragon Dragon Ball GT's final act. In my opinion, I don't think Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is overrated because his failing in the moment wasn't his fault, but it led to him being a success for all the rest of time. All praise towards Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is deserved because his execution, whilst present, was satisfying as a fan. He did complete one of his missions by purifying the earth and was working with the time limit he thought he had. The fact that he could be so chill and have a few laughs in front of a serious villain only made his presence far more superior in the face of the deadliest villain of GT. It's like, Omega is supposed to be here, all dark and gloomy and evil, Ooh. but Gogeta's here laughing him off and blasting him with party poppers. I love that contrast. It's like, whatever dude. And we got to see him being a prankster and being serious. He is the full package fusion. And he has a tail. Don't forget the tail. But even though I think he could defeat Omega Fresh but not in GT due to the disadvantage of his fusion situation with Goku's weakened body, I still think Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is rated just right. Not overrated and not underrated. He deserves the love he received. A very likeable, bubbly and probably the coolest character in Dragon Ball history. And the amount of people that still talk about him and praise him from such a short appearance speaks volumes about how awesome he was. And that's what's important with Dragon Ball, right? The cool memories. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's memory and presence is a very cool one that continues to stand the rest of time.